Okay, so today I'm going to be switching it up a little bit and talking about some current events, history stuff. So recently I watched this documentary called Winter on Fire. Um, it's a pretty good documentary about the protests in Ukraine in 2014. Um, the protests known as the Euro Maidan protests. Um, basically, you know, as we all know, the war with Russia and Ukraine has been at the forefront of the news for months now. And um, going back to 2014, Russia annexed uh, an eastern region of Ukraine called Crimea, uh, which had a lot of pro-Russian citizens living there, Russian speakers who, you know, felt some affinity with Russia. You know, not everyone is that familiar with some of the events that took place before the annexation of Crimea in 2014. So specifically, they were these um, uprisings, these protests known as the Euromaidan protests, where basically thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians basically rose up and were protesting against the government for a lot of reasons, including corruption, abuse of power, you know, protesting against the influence of the oligarchs. So... I thought I would just briefly talk a bit about that, because I think it is a, an interesting topic. Um, so, very, very long story short, uh, before 2014, the president of Ukraine was a guy called Viktor Yanukovych. So, basically, the protests began when um, it seemed like there was going to be a treaty signed between Ukraine and the EU, basically an association treaty that would have increased economic ties between Ukraine and the European Union, just in general increased the association between the EU and Ukraine. But then at the last minute toward the end of 2013, uh, the government of Ukraine, led by Viktor Yanukovych, they announce at the last minute that they are pulling out of this deal and they are not going to sign this agreement with the EU. So a lot of Ukrainian citizens were unhappy about this. Um, a lot of them went online to social media to complain. And basically online, people began, you know, talking about and organizing real world protests, okay, where they would just take their grievances to the street. And specifically, they would take it to a massive public square in the capital city of Kiev. Um, and the square is called the Maidan. So that's where these protests got their name, the Euromaidan protests, you know, the protests that took place in the Maidan Square about the, this, this agreement with the EU that Yanukovych pulled out of at the last minute. So to give a very oversimplified um, summary of what happened with these protests is that people began protesting against the government and the protests started growing. And as they started growing, uh, Yanukovych's government actually sent in police and security forces to basically d shut down the protests and, you know, take a stand against the protesters. Um, and actually, they, you know, unleashed some violence upon the protesters, which instead of making the protests shut down, they made the protesters even more angry. And then you see from there the protests actually start getting bigger with even more people coming out to protests, uh, to protest. So at the beginning, um, on the first day of the protests in the Maidan Square, there were a few dozen people, I believe, um, you know, less than a hundred, but it kept escalating and escalating to the point that months later, you know, I think at the peak, there were a million protesters in the square. Um, and the people essentially fortified themselves in the square, refused to leave, and were there for months, um, weeks and months, protesting against the government. And so the government kept trying to disrupt the protests, kept using more force to do so, to the point that eventually um, they killed some protesters, or some protesters died in the clashes, which just got the people even more passionate about the issue, got even more protesters to come out. And this goes on for months and months during 2014 until eventually um, the president Yanukovych uh, gave up power. Uh, he fled to Russia 
and left the presidency. So then off shortly, well, in the months and weeks after that, new elections are held for a new government in Ukraine, and the winner is this um, wealthy businessman called Petro Poroshenko. So then a lot of the people living in the eastern, more pro-Russian, Russian-speaking Russian speaking, Russian leaning regions of Ukraine are not happy about this. They're not happy about the new government um, that is coming into power in Ukraine, which is more pro EU and more skeptical toward Russia. So then you get two regions of the eastern part of Ukraine, Luhansk and Donetsk, um, sort of declare independence from the new Ukraine government. Russia recognizes that. And. Um, it's in that context that Russia sends in forces to, you know, claim this eastern region of Ukraine now as a part of Russia. And so that is, in a nutshell, what happened in 2014 with the Euromaidan protests and the subsequent annexation of Crimea. So that's really a, a, like a seriously important prologue to the current war in Ukraine. So the events in 2014, they're not the beginning of the story. The story goes back hundreds of years. But 2014 is a landmark year in this escalating tension between Ukraine and Russia. So it is a really fascinating moment in history. And there is a lot that we can be, there's a lot that we can think about it for, you know, there's a lot that we can learn from those events. And it's also interesting how the, the uprisings and the protests in Ukraine fit into the larger wave of protests that kind of took place in many countries around the world um, in the early 2010s. Like, of course, you get the Arab Spring, which began in 2011, which was kind of, there were many similarities in the sense that you get tons of citizens rising up, protesting against their governments and government policies that they are unhappy with. And a lot of the, the protests are organized via the internet and specifically via social media. So kind of the, the 2014 Ukraine protests kind of fit into this broader wave, which includes the Arab Spring protests. And the author Martin Gurry has um, a very good book called The Revolt of the Public, where he sort of delves into some of these issues. And he kind of tries to provide some reasons for what drove all of these protests that broke out in the early 2010s. Very good book. Highly recommend that you check it out.